Stan Jibalisco here with an extension of the math porn that I expounded upon in the theory of 1 divided by 0 and also the theory of a number that's so big that adding 1 to it doesn't make any difference. I uh, was asking if that is infinity or not or if it if it's enough of an infinity to call it infinity. I guess I have a little bit of an issue with the term infinity itself as Georg Cantor had when he in, uh, invented his system of transfinite cardinal numbers. Uh, look up Georg Cantor in uh, Google. Well, I could cross it out. I could also erase it in order to write down this guy's name. As far as I know, this mathematician who existed around the turn of the century from the 1800s to the 1900s lost his mind, uh, in part because people made such fun of his theories, which are now pretty much commonly accepted today, transfinite cardinal numbers. You can also look that up in Google. You can also look up math porn take one as a phrase in Google and it'll take you to my original page. I mean, Google is good, you know, with YouTube being associated with them. Search results work out real nice. But I would like to get into another possible definition of infinity and that is the tangent of pi over 2. That's radians. You might also call it 90 degrees. Now, if you work that out in a calculator, if you take a calculator and you enter 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians in there and hit, then hit the tangent button, you're going to get an error message of some kind or another. But there are two ways to look at that. If, if you may remember, a uh, triangle with one right angle in it, also known as a right triangle, is a basis for determine, determining trigonometric functions. Remember the basic Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared in a triangle like this where the longest side c is also called the hypotenuse and the right angle is right there. So b over a the length of, of this vertical side divided by the length of that side is the tangent of this angle right here. Now if we call that angle theta, then the tangent of theta equals b over a. Well, Now suppose that this angle were 90 degrees. Well, you're not going to have a triangle if you do that. There are two ways to think of this triangle, which a friend of mine in high school and I used to affectionately call a 0-90-90 triangle. And that is, you can extend side C up like this until this angle right here, theta, is 90 degrees. And then it's parallel to side B. It's like side C and side B become infinitely long or endless parallel rays extending from these points. Then if you take side B which also becomes infinitely long here divided by side A you get infinity in effect divided by uh, whatever this length might be. Presumably infinity divided by any finite number is infinity. Well that's one way to look at it. There's also another thing that you can do with this triangle and that is to make side A shorter and shorter and shorter while leaving side B the same length. And if you do that, side C will get somewhat shorter until it's equal to side B. And then you get just a line segment like that with the length C being equal to zero. Then you can in effect think of this angle theta as reaching 90 degrees. It approaches 90 degrees as you move side C in like that. 
when you actually get there, it's kind of debatable what happens. But b over a then is clearly going to be equal to b over 0, b being finite, some finite number. I didn't write that down very well at all, did I? b divided by 0. So if we set side b at 1, for example, then 1 over 0 equals the tangent of 90 degrees in that sense. We can also look at the unit circle model, which is probably the best way to do this. Remember the unit circle model? Now, when I was in um, high school, I had a mathematics teacher in 10th grade, and he was great. I think he's still alive today. Maybe he should watch that video. His name was Mr. Frame, F-R-A-M-E. Great mathematics teacher, and he presented trigonometric functions according to a unit circle rather than as triangles. And I took that I took off on that in my book Trigonometry Demystified in the first edition and people just crucified me for doing that because they didn't understand it. They didn't get it. But when when Mr. Frame taught it though, it was so easy to understand it was just like triviality. This is a unit circle meaning it's in a coordinate system an XY coordinate system, Cartesian coordinates. Cartesian meaning rectangular coordinates where the vertical and horizontal divisions are all are the same size. So if we consider this distance here to be one unit, and we have here the point one zero, we have here the point zero one. We have here the point minus 1, 0, and the point here, 0, minus 1, where these are ordered pairs in the form x, y, like that. The radius equals 1 unit all the way around. So that's why it's called a unit circle. This is the origin, or the point 0, 0. Now, when you do this and you take an angle theta, you take some ray like this, and you measure the angle with respect to the x-axis, and you call that angle theta. Then the sine of theta just equals the y value of this point right here. The cosine of theta just equals the x value of this point right here. And so the tangent of theta, which we know equals the sine over the cosine, the tangent of theta equals y over x. So if you make theta 90 degrees, then y over x is 1 divided by 0. So we can say, in fact, that the tangent of pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees, the tangent of 90 degrees equals 1 over 0, which in my previous uh, video, Math Porn Take 1, I referred to as the numerical entity Yagi, which is defined as 1 divided by 0. So we can now uh, define uh, Yagi as the tangent of 90 degrees, as well as 1 over 0, and as well as a number such that adding 1 to it doesn't make any difference. So we have now three different ways in which this numerical entity, and I call it a numerical entity according to my numerical entity theory, which you can uh, access according to uh, the website that I will provide as a link in the description of this video, sciencewriter.net slash NCH, which stands for Nerd Cave Hypotheses. 
in which I go to all of this kind of math porn. Maybe not, I should have called it, and maybe I should call that math porn. But I guess, you know, after having Googled on that term, math porn, I guess I don't have to be some gorgeous model, male model, you know, standing in front of my video camera with a bathing suit on dividing by zero and taking the tangent and 90 degrees and all that kind of stuff I can I can just go to the, straight to the theory cut straight to the chase math porn so I guess this term works out good enough for these um, intents and porpoises and again I would uh, urge you to go to this website science writer dot net slash n c h nerd cave hypotheses and you can download the pdfs certain tablet devices like the ipad will read them directly and you can let me know what you think of that too so for now i'll say so long i've prattled and yammered at you long enough but now I hope you get the idea that maybe, in fact, there is something to this division by zero business after all. My seventh grade teacher, were she still alive today, and maybe she still is, would probably still, to this day, you know, old, old, old woman that she would be, toothless hag that she would be, you know, would probably say, division by zero is not defined. Stan Jibalisco signing off from the Nerd Cave penthouse where math porn is spawned. Until next time, so long.